Assalamu alaikum, alaikum salam, que sambi la kutar. I pray you guys are having a great day. Um, today is a hot day here in Philadelphia. Pretty good. Uh, sorry for the noise, guys. I'm in a uh, commercial area. Well, not really commercial, but more um, transitory. A lot of vehicles pass through these areas. Uh, people get their car washes down here. There's a lot of car washes. And if you notice, that's absolutely what I'm getting done today to the vehicle. Uh, haven't washed it for like three months, man. It's just, the cold weather is like, it's very hard. Even though these guys are out here washing, you just can't, you know, you stop and, and you gotta wait outside, you know, and it's cold, you know, it's raining or whatever. And I like to wash the car even though it's raining or not, just to get that, that dust and dirt that penetrates to the clear of your vehicle and actually ruins the clear and then you start fading out your car so it's not about uh cleaning it um and it's gonna rain tomorrow it's cleaning it anyway you clean it anyway because yeah, i used to watch cars i used to watch cars you know before i had my own truck and i used to watch cars for companies i used to go straight to companies and watch bmw mercedes jaguars hoop these regular cars and um it was a, a once a week thing with these companies and it was it didn't matter if it was raining snowing whatever they wanted the car to get the salt off of it to get all that grime off of it because they understood that it ruined the, the car's clear and it penetrates the paint and ruins the car's paint you might not see it at the beginning but in the long run you'll start seeing that your faint fades if you are planning to keep your car for years and years you understand um anyway i didn't come here to talk about cars but as you know guys i'm i am who i am and i talk as i talk and that's how I came in. Um, I wish you guys are having a great day. I pray that you guys are doing fine and everything's going great. I wanted to clear up a couple of things about uh, a, a comment that was put on one of my videos. And um, the the comment was sort of like uh, these days, uh, it, look, it seems like all these religions are about money. And we're going to call it religion because a lot of people uh, look at the custom of a Kisimaloga as a religion, even though it's not a religion. Um, some people might uh, uh, defer that, but that's fine, you know. Um, I always said that when you have faith in something, um, as far as having faith, you know, you have to believe on something that you don't see, you don't know, and you don't, you know, really comprehend, so you have faith in it. And in Kisimalongo, as a practitioner, we usually, to be honest with you, I don't have faith about the Nganga. I know that the Nganga, if it says it's going to help you, it's going to help you. So there's no faith there, you understand? But anyway, what I really wanted to come into today is about that comment. That comment speech that spoke of that the guy said, uh, or the female, I do not know. Um, and I like comments, that's the reason why, because it gives you something to speak about. But I wanted to make it clear that not all religions or traditions are about money. Not all, you understand? We have to separate the tradition, okay? If you want to call it religion, call it religion. But you want to separate the tradition from the people. The people are the ones that make the traditions or religions what they are. So if you got a, a, a bad practitioner that is doing things he's not supposed to do or she's doing something she's not supposed to be doing or she's getting over people does it make the tradition or the religion wrong or does it, it make the person being the wrong one and clearly we can see is the person the individual the practitioner who's doing things for that benefit you understand to gain money or that's what they you know that's what they want you know they just want to scam or whatever but it does not make in Kisi Malongo the bad practice or tradition here and no way no form can we say that in Kisimalongo is a bad practice because it's the people who make who makes in Kisimalongo a black practice it's the people who make the Orisha practice uh, uh, or tradition look wrong and bad and people don't want to get in it's the, it's the people the people I'm sorry the people who make the tradition of Ifa wrong you understand or bad or people are afraid to get into it and they start disliking because of what the people do it's not the tradition or the religion if you want to call it if you find yourself a good practitioner that actually has respect 
and and, and um, is real. Um, how can I say? Real passionate, you know, towards the tradition that he follows. You will see that, and you will come to find out that these people are great people, honest, humble, sincere, loving. Um, they 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 um, they worry about you. They always looking for your well being. You know, they ask you, they call you, hey, how you doing? If you don't, they see you. Sometimes you get some that don't call at all, but you get a lot that will call you. Hey, how you doing? And you, you know, to your to your amazement, you're like, oh wow, this Tata called me, you know, out of nowhere. I didn't expect that. Well, thanks, Tata. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, because a lot of them are like this. You understand? That's what they they're about. They're about helping. Um, I always said that there's a lot of things that Tatas and Yayas do that they don't charge money for. You know, they they do things. A lot of them do it out of the heart. You understand? And it comes within them from them. You know. Um, but there are things that there is money involved because there are things that cost money in this life that is hard for, um, if, you know, if, if you get a practitioner, that, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to jump to another thing, right? It's talking about the same thing and they don't charge you nothing and you're a godchild. Then the next godchild that comes wants the same service for you to not charge them anything. You understand and it's fine when it's your godchildren and you see that the ones that are actually uh, moving forward the ones that are helping out the ones that are more you know fluid around you the ones that you know really really respect this and and, and, and have it defined and those are the ones that you really help out a lot you know you try your best to teach them all you can and when it comes to free things most of the times you just tell them, hey, you guys buy the things and, you know, we'll do it, you know? And it only costs them what they put out from their own pocket, you know, for the things that the Tata or Yaya is going to build or conform to them, you know, while they be there also and watch and understand and learn at the same time. Um, but there are also times that you're going to have to pay for things, you know, because you got to always remember that the Nganga, there's a derecho that has to be paid. And the Tata always has to take care, all the Yaya has to take care of their Ngangas. And some houses run it this way. Some houses run it that whatever the Nganga says. And then some houses run whatever the Tata says as far as price, you know, and what to do. You know, you'll get houses that the Tata is the one that puts the price. Straight up, without not even asking the Nganga. And then you get a house like we do. I'm, I'm going to say we because I myself do it is that I, I start asking the Nganga for a particular price. Why? Because I kind of already know, depending on what I'm going to do, how much is going to be spent on those items. So I start asking from a certain amount, if this is fine, could we charge this derecho? And if it says yes, it says, if it says no, then we just keep going whichever way, either up or we could keep going either down, you know? Sometimes the Nganga comes out and says, yo, just charge them $21. And you're like, what? So like, yeah, tell us I'm charging $21. And you be like, yeah, but the Nganga, that's what the Nganga says. So you can't, you can't supersede what the Nganga says if you're letting it up to the Nganga to do the decisions uh, about the things that have to be done and what you're gonna charge them. And that's how I, I, I do it. And if I'm not mistaken, that's how my lineage does it also. They always talk and figure out what's needed and what is going to be charged you know there's a contradiction in, in, in some of the houses there's a little bit of debate on this sort of things of no the nganga doesn't say you say it or whatever but it's more in my tradition in my house in my family it's more about it's both of us because if you understand you have to know kind of what you're going to spend you know, on those particular items and things that you need to conform that. And then the derecho, they, they, they're gonna have to pay. So you kind of start from there. But the nganga at the end is the one who says, yes, this is the price. No, that's not the price. Keep going down, you know, or, or go up a little bit more. You know, so this is what is it about, guys. It's not about the tradition. It's about the people who make the tradition wrong, the tradition bad. It's about the people these days, and even back then too, and you know, years ago, people were doing horrible things, you know, and 
it kept leading to people not liking these African, uh, uh, Afro-Cuban based traditions because of this practice, you know, but um, like I always said, if you guys look for a good, you know, practitioner, a good tata, good yaya, um, they are out there, you understand? You just gotta find them and be patient, you know? But uh, as far as judgment and saying that all the, the, these religions have come down to money, in one sense it's true, and in another sense it's not. You know, I understand that side. I understand that part about the gentleman speaking that way. But at the same time, uh, it's not true. There's still a lot of people out there who are doing or are trying to do the correct things. They're, they're not trying to lift off of the religion. They're just trying to help and to, and to uphold what they are being taught or, or, or have been taught. And they love the tradition. They love dealing with the muertos. They love what they do. So they do it not only from the heart, um, but they do it, you know, with love and with understanding of that spirit or spirits that are in there in that monanza. You know, so I just wanted to, you know, say that today and um, a lot of noise out here, I'm sorry. Um, but I pray you guys having a great day or have a great day. Um, any questions, any comments, you can always leave them below. Uh, I'm not saying that the gentleman is incorrect. Yes, there's a lot of them, but it's not all of them. You know, it's not a whole totality. Not everybody does it, even though you might find a great majority uh, do it. But there are a lot out there that do not. And they, they follow the tradition the right way. And they do it with love, you understand? For the tradition and for the people to save humanity. Uh, have a great day. Be safe. It's your brother from another mother. And salam aleko. Maleko and Sala, que sambe la gutare always. My email address is w3qin1973 at gmail.com. I repeat, w3qin1973 at gmail.com. Have a great day. Give me a thumbs up for the algorithm, guys. Be safe.